हाँ जी आप स्टार्ट कर सकते हो ऑलमोस्ट आगे और आते रहेंगे हेलो हाय सर इट्स इन माय क्लॉक यू वांट वेट फॉर वन मोर मिनट हाँ निशान जी एक मिनट और वेट कर लेते मैं उधर को शाम वो स्क्रीन शेयरिंग एनेबल कर देना So we chat some. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Great. So good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you for uh, you know giving me this opportunity to take a session on career paths for finance professionals. I get asked a lot as to. you know many times i get these questions like you know which profile is the best which qualification is the best which uh, technology tool should i learn should i learn sap should i learn oracle you know but before all of that you know it's important that um, you understand the broad landscape which is available out there the kind of career opportunities that are available out there and what are those changes that have happened in the last 15 20 years that may impact your career decision so qualification or learning a technology tool is just one very small part of your entire finance career it is going to be it is going to be a long long career right and how do you plan for this career uh, is what we'll try and look at uh, you know uh, today here cool so a little bit about me before we begin i'm a qualified chartered accountant uh, i'm also completed my one year executive management program from iim ahmedabad of 12 plus years of industry experience across diverse sectors like uh, software oil and gas uh, advertising and pr i've also worked in a global shared services setup of a commodity trading company i also consider myself a sincere student of personal development i always keep investing in different kind of programs and coaching programs to uh, keep upgrading myself and that nearly happens on a constant basis uh um, if i don't spend like at least 30 to 45 minutes doing some or the other online course every day i feel my day is incomplete you know that's uh, that's the habit that i've developed uh but it took some time for me to reach there um, i started with like 5 10 minutes of uh, upscale videos every day and now i'm in a position where i spend about at least 45 to 50 minutes every day to learn something new that's great actually <laughs> i've also mentored hundreds of chartered accountants and finance professionals through my initiative called as hashtag #saturday mentoring um you know i i started uh, taking one on one calls on saturdays and started reserving my time a little bit and then some of those common questions that i got i started you know putting them through uh, a training programs and everything and i'm happy that uh, i have been an online instructor active online instructor since last three years and more than 5000 finance professionals have taken the benefit of 
uh, the courses that I have, courses and trainings that I have put out there on my website, trainforpop.com. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned, there are, you know, 40 plus articles which you can see on LinkedIn. I continuously keep posting on LinkedIn as well. So you can follow me. I've published a couple of free guides around uh, mentoring and some of the, you know, frequently asked questions that, you know, finance professionals may have about their careers. Uh, a lot of video trainings that I post as well. I've done more than one to one thousand one to one calls as well, and now I've actually lost count. Every week I do at least like three or four calls, depending on the uh, time. Yeah. <clears throat> So nothing too technical. These are largely around career guidance and uh, you know mentoring. So you can check out some programs there. So what do we cover here today? Uh, so first of all, we'll try and understand the broad industry landscape as to what are the different kinds of organizations available out there. What are the different kinds of opportunities available out there? I've tried to you know sum up into a small uh, diagram, so to say, which will help you understand the full picture of what different opportunities are available out there. Uh, three different parts for finance professionals. We'll dive a little bit more deeper into that. Consulting versus industry. Should you get into a consulting firm like a big four or a CA firm or any of these firms which are consulting firms? Or should you go into a, a mainstream industry, you know, join as an assistant and keep growing up to the ranks of becoming a CFO someday, hopefully? Yeah, that is what we'll also look at. And then finally, we'll look at a simple framework to develop uh, somebody is not on mute. Uh, I think mute kar lijega, uh, Yeah, hmm. yeah. So we'll look at a simple framework, career framework that will help you, uh, you know, develop your careers on a consistent basis as well. So this is what we we'll largely cover today. So I know many of you might have some specific questions like, you know, that what is that one best profile that I can go for? What is that one best qualification that I, that I can go for? So let me tell you the reality here that there's nothing called as one best, okay? There's no one best company. There's no one best, uh, you know, um, profile. There's no one best tool that you can work on. So your life is going to be a little bit more dynamic than you think. Okay. And keep it a little bit open uh, because it's a 40 year long career, right? So it's a, no, nobody knows what kind of an organization you will be working on uh, tomorrow. Right. So, you know, 10 years ago when I, uh, when I was act very actively in my early days of my career, Amazon's and the world did not exist. Right, the way they exist today, right? Similarly, the technological advancement had not happened the way it happens today. Uh, it has happened today, right? So uh, you never know. You need not really try and get that 15-year clarity or that one best golden profile or golden company or, you know, people come and ask me that, how do I get into Goldman Sachs? You know, yeah, I mean, if, if Goldman Sachs was a company that offered you everything, then why are people leaving it in two, three years? You can check out the median tenure on LinkedIn and you will see that people are staying there for two, 2.5 years. Um, people ask me, how can I get into BCG or McKinsey? Again, the median tenure is two, two and a half years. So if that company was so good, then people should have stayed there till retirement, right? So they're not staying, which means that you can't attach your career with one company. You know, you will have to go with the flow, get some opportunities yeah, um, or, or capitalize the opportunities that come your way and then keep building your career. Yeah. So keep an open mind when I'm sharing this, uh, sharing whatever I'm sharing today. Right? Don't try and you know just look for that one specific answer in these presentations. You might not get it, but we will have a Q&A session at the end where I can address any specific questions that you might have. So let us understand the broad industry landscape out there. Okay? What are the different kind of organizations that are available? And I found this interesting chart where you can see that largely the number of different kind of companies, there could be hundreds and different hundreds and thousands of different kinds of companies, right? You can put them all into these four broad buckets, okay? One is the public accounting space where you have your big fours or CA firms or any of these consulting and accounting firms which do your audit, uh, tax consulting, you know, uh, m and advisory, transaction advisory, valuations, to some extent management consulting as well. So all of them are in these public accounting or consulting space. Then you have your banks which are a completely different ocean where you have your retail banking, your corporate banking, yeah, um, investment banking, all those things are under the banking system. BFSI, banking and financial institutions are 
a huge huge play when it comes to um, you know opportunities for finance professionals right and then you have your uh, you know financial institutions that is your private equity companies or portfolio management companies or asset management companies or equity research you know all of these things or wealth management companies for that matter so all of them come under these financial institutions bucket and then you have your classic corporates right where it's your manufacturing services or a trading organization where you uh, in a in a classic role there will be different kind of uh, you know in a, in a classic company there will be different kind of opportunities ranging from you know accounting to fp and a uh, to business intelligence tools or erp implementation treasury investor relations corporate finance internal audit uh, taxation there could be a number of different kind of uh, departments or functions within a classic corporate as well and of course these functions can exist in these companies as well like there could be a tax department in a bank there could be a tax department in a financial institution there could be a tax department in a in, a, in an accounting firm as well right so yeah so uh, this this is the broad landscape no matter what company you can you you want to talk about you can classify them into one or the other bucket okay now over the past two decades the most important development that has happened you know around the world is that a parallel universe has been created in terms of the kpos the shared services or the global you know uh, environment that has come into play right as globalization increased now you are seeing that today you will find you know a, a bank which may not have operations in india but it will have a global shared services or a global business center or a center of excellence or whatever you want to call it okay or a kpo kind of a setup here in india right if there is a a jp morgan bank which is a mainstream bank you will find a shared service of a jp morgan also if you have a goldman sachs then you will find a shared service of a you know goldman sachs as well right similarly for financial institutions if you have a, a ubs uh, which is very prominent abroad you will have a ubs shared services as well if you have a dotsha bank you will have a dotsha bank shared services as well right so a global a globalization has given this opportunity where a lot of back office and mid office accounting functions have uh, or other finance functions have actually transitioned to india and the massive talent that is available in india is getting this opportunity to work in these companies and that's a fantastic thing that has that has happened in the past two decades now you might have seen in the last 5 years you know all these big four firms as well like ey has now a ey gds or kpmg has now a kpmg global services right so all of those uh, you know even the big four firms or the public accounting firms also now have a global shared services uh, kind of an alternative yeah similarly no matter what company you take what larger company you want to talk about let's say a microsoft for example it will have its own shared services in india if you want to talk about shell it will have its shared services in india right if you want to talk about musk which is a larger shipping company it will have its shared services in india so every company uh, is looking to you know set up their Uh, back office and mid office functions in india so that the, the kind of talent base that is available here in india is simply massive right and no other country in the globe has so much of talent available in one go you know india is going to be the youngest country by 2025 which means the median age of the population to work in other countries is reducing and in india it is around the average 25 25 to 30 years of age which means the the, the working population is here in india so if advert uh, if outsourcing has grown let's say i'm just throwing a number here let's say 5x in the last 20 years it's going to go it's going to grow 50x in the next 10 15 years yeah it is going to be that prominent that common so if you are getting an opportunity to work in a shared services setup of any of these companies for that matter of a multinational for that matter then don't don't negate that opportunity you know i get asked many times as to if i work in a global shared services then will i be able to move to an indian setup of course you can no profile is a dead end what may change is the regulatory aspect of things right if you are working in a in a in a eygds maybe you will not be working on uh, the local accounting or tax compliances but you will still be working on the same finance and accounting concepts you know will a balance sheet be called any different in india or australia no you know will profitability be computed any different in india and new zealand no right so the fundamental finance and accounting principles will still remain the same so back yourself on that back yourself on this and if you are getting an opportunity from these outsourcing setup you should take it because you might have a faster growth opportunity there as well 
Yeah. So this is the broad industry landscape. Now you understand, you know, what are the different kind of setups there? You might join a classic company like an LNT in an accounting function as an accounts manager, accounts manager LNT. Now that could be your classic corporate role. However, you may join as an accounts manager Microsoft, which is which can actually be a global shared services center or an Amazon for that matter. It could be a global shared services center, and you might be actually sitting here in India and doing accounting for some other country. You know, I was I have also worked in a global shared services of a commodity uh, trading company where we, were, where we were doing accounting and FPA for you know uh, more than hundred different subsidiaries spread across eighty different countries. Yeah, so. It is a lucrative opportunity, so don't just um, write it off just because it's a KPO kind of a setup. Okay, the way you look at it is now. I'm sure it will be very different after you understand this broad landscape. Cool. Moving forward, now before you get to any specific profile, you know, many of you may have aspirations to work in something very super specific. Like, can I work in M and A? Can I work in private equity? Can I work in uh, investment banking? Can I work in uh, treasury? You know all of these specific, um, you know, profiles. You may have certain ambitions to work in, right? But let me tell you, my friends, no profile uh, is a guarantee or guarantee that it will be strategic for an entire life, right? So it's a, like I mentioned, it's a forty-year-long career. Will getting into M and A be exciting? Yes, it will be exciting for three, four years. After that, you know, can you do M and A for forty years? I don't think so. You will have to find something else. Yeah, yeah. So, how do you decide what is your interest? You know, and I'm going to give you a, give you a broad framework. It, I I do understand that. You know, it is very difficult for you to uh, finalize your interest today on this call. But it, but think about it. Think about it well, and think about the broad career paths that you want to follow. And there are three career paths that you can think about. Okay, one is being an expert. Expert path. Right? Expert path is where you are actually becoming a subject matter expert. Right? It could be a GST expert, or a direct tax expert, or a transfer pricing expert, or an accounting expert, or an in sales expert, or an IFRS expert. You know, depending on the different kind of subject matter expertise that you want to um, capitalize on. Okay, see whether you want to become a subject matter expert. Okay. Yes, this is a subject that gives me a kick. I am ready to do it for my entire life. If there is something a subject like that which gives you a kick, then try and become a subject matter expert in that particular area. Now, how can you do that? Find out who are the existing experts. Now, it could be big four firms or it could be some other practicing firms. Now, let's say you want to be a GST expert. Find out what are the top ten GST consulting firms in India. Okay, and then see if you can apply for an internship there or try and get into that. Uh, organization and eventually, eight, ten, fifteen years later, you will build yourself as an expert on that in that particular area. Yeah, so it's going to be long, um, you know, uh, long hours and a lot of sweat and tears right, to build yourself as an expert, subject matter expert. So make sure that you decide on that particular subject very, um, you know, thoughtfully, you know, and think about it well. Now I'll tell you another great, uh, you know, distinction. You. You might like to read a subject, okay, but not necessarily you might like to work in it. For example, you know, I used to love to read taxes during my chartered accountancy, but I never liked working in taxes, you know, because working in taxes and reading taxes is way way different. You know, it's not about giving fancy opinions every time by reading a section. You know, it's not that. Okay, so working in tax is far more complicated than just reading a book on tax. Yeah, so do your research thoroughly. Okay, and then choose your subject. Whether if you if you decide to be a subject matter expert, if you don't want to decide, if you don't decide to be a subject matter expert, then there are other options. Let me cover them as well. The second one is the generalist path. Now, in the generalist path, what happens is that as you grow in your career, you are most likely to become a management professional. Okay, uh, for example, a CFO's role is a generalist role. You know, I'm just giving an example. There could be hundreds of different generalist roles, right? A CFO's role is a generalist role. Now, why I call him a generalist? Because a CFO is not a subject matter expert. No, he's not a GST expert, or he's not a forex expert, or he's not a treasury expert, or he's not a uh, you know accounting standard expert. But he knows just enough to put the right resources together, you know, and deliver the solution. He knows just enough to put the right team together. He knows just enough to ask the right question, 
right set of questions to the tax consultant and get a response yeah that is the generalist part in the generalist part it's that classic route where you join as a junior in whatever field you may join okay, and keep going up to the ranks for example if you join a classic corporate in a finance function you might join as a executive then grow as a, a manager senior manager general manager you know avp vpc of for some day you know that's the classic route yeah and then again uh, if you join as in, in investment banking you might join as an associate and then grow up finally grow up to the ranks of being a partner senior partner yeah so depending on the kind of organization that you intend to join okay you will have to work on general management skills and your business skills as you grow along your career in the initial days of your career it is going to be very finance and accounting specific okay but as you grow higher up the ladder your ability to communicate with different cross functional teams your ability to carry uh, you know the expectations of different business functions right that is what matters in a generalist kind of a profile now yes if you have entrepreneurial ambitions at a later date let's say 5 5 years 10 years down the line i want to start a business of my own then try and look for a generalist kind of a profile where you are staying closer to the business yeah but try and uh, where at least you have some level of interaction with the business then that will help you you know uh, with your entrepreneurial ambitions as well then the third path is the technology path now you have seen that the pace with which technology is changing is you know fantastic right um, automation robotic process automation uh, business intelligence tools artificial intelligence machine learning all of this has come in a big big way okay and is really disrupting the finance and accounting industry yeah so if you have that deep interest in technology and i always give that example that whenever we are doing our article ship in in a chartered accountancy firm okay there is this one guy who is an excel expert you know there is this one guy in the in the in that ca firm like if if anybody has that question on excel we go to that guy and that guy will give us a solution you know something like that so if you were that guy who likes working with technology who likes playing with these tools right and giving a solution to people when they come to you with problems then technology path is for you okay now in technology path there could be multiple technologies that you can work on they they are erps which is sap oracle navision then there are business intelligence tools now a business intelligence tool is something which sits on top of the erp and gives you summary level reports like for example if i have to analyze travel expenses of my company okay it's a large company let's say a 5000 crore company and travel expenses of let's say um you know 50 plus crores okay now i have to analyze the travel expenses in my company now i can't go into the erp and then set an export and download 50000 lines of travel expenses you know and search for the solution right so that's why business intelligence tools are created which sit on top of the erp and give you a summary level report now you can which will be like a drag and drop or you know a click through button as well like there will be travel expenses line now you will go and say okay give me a region wise breakup of the travel line then you will say north east south west okay then you will say okay northern region has suddenly there is an increase in travel so now you go to northern region and see which branch has increased you know, the traveling cost now you understand this this is all a drag and drop you are not actually exporting the whole data into excel and then analyzing it that is the impact of a bi tool okay it's drag and drop it's you know click through and you will find your solution yeah so there are a lot of bi tools available okay which you can uh, look for okay and then uh, there are planning tools available these days uh, there is a planning tool called ana plan which is getting very popular uh, again this is used into budgeting and uh, you know planning and all of that stuff and supply chain and all so ana plan is another tool that is uh, very good so you decide what technology you want to if you want to be a technology expert then try and see what you want to um, be expert at and now when i say technology you need not go ahead and be an outright coder okay coding is not we as finance and accounting professionals are expected to do okay but however there are functional consultant roles now a functional consultant acts as a bridge between the the coder and the business you understand the business problems okay then ex, you know explains it in a way that the coder can understand okay. and then this coder will develop the solution he will test it and then pass it on to the business you know now that is the role of a functional consultant so he acts as he acts as a bridge between the business and the coder yeah now you see if functional consulting role is something which interests you yeah if you like working with technology then 
you can explore functional consulting uh, roles as well. Now you see, then there are other technology tools which are data analytics tools like R, Python, SQL, all of these are available today as well, right? See if you want to, uh, if you like, if you like working in data analytics, okay? And, or any, um, become an expert in any of those tools, like Power BI uh, is another tool which you can think about, uh, you know, becoming an expert in. See if you are that technology guy and you want to be that technology uh, expert, okay, so to say. And then um, learn about it. Now, how do you how do you understand which technology is for you? Okay, should I should I uh, invest my time in learning artificial intelligence or should I invest my time in learning Power BI? Now, what should I do? Okay. My best suggestion to you would be that try out everything in small parcels. Okay, in small focus buckets. Like for example, you know you allocate that you will learn about Power BI for twenty hours. Now you could do a four hour course on Udemy. You could do some, uh, you could check some videos on YouTube, whatever you want to do. I would recommend that you check, put 20 hours in a certain technology. And you put 20 hours to learn SAP. You put 20 hours to learn Power BI. You, you put, put about 20 hours to learn Python, for example. Okay. And then you put these multiple parcels of 20 hours. Okay. Over a period of three, four months. Okay. Then you will be in the position to narrow down that. Yes, boss, Python is my, you know, interest, you know, this can be really helpful. This is what I enjoy. Or you might say, no, SAP is my interest. You know, SAP is something which I really enjoy. I have to make some expertise in this. And then you go ahead and look for a advanced certification in it. Okay. Advanced certification or a diploma or an advanced course, whatever you want to do, try and look for an advanced certification in it. And then again, parallelly look for internships as well. You know, there'll be many, many com companies which will be into ERP implementation, BI tool implementation, planning tool implementation, or working in the data analytics space, try and, um, you know, along with the certification, try and get a parallel uh, internship as well. You know, that's how you approach technology because otherwise you will hear tons of videos out there, you know, which might say that, you know, uh, technology is coming and it will take away accountant's job and this and that. And then you are clueless as to, you know, which technology should I learn now? You know, so the technology, though it's a, it's a very vast field, right? So that's, that would be my approach, creating small, parcels, small focus buckets. Okay. And then see what is your interest, whether you're interested in power BI or whether you're interested in an ERP implementation, you know, then you can take a call. So these are the three broad paths. Okay. Expert path where you become an ex subject matter expert so much so that people are ready to pay top dollars for your time. Okay. Uh, generalist where you keep growing up to the ranks of becoming a senior professional someday here, finance is going to intersect with management at some point in time and then technology path. That is, if you get that deep happiness by giving a technology solution to a business problem, then technology path is for you. Again, here you will become a certain technology expert, technology leader, so that people are ready to pay top dollars for your time. Yeah. So these are the three broad paths. Now, again, whenever you plan your careers, think in these paths, not in those individual profiles. Should I learn m and Should I learn this one? I know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting a payroll manager role. You know, is that okay or not okay? You know, now there's nothing wrong with getting into a payroll manager role per se, right? Because nobody is going to stop you getting a transfer after two, three years into some other department, right? So largely, if you join as a payroll manager and if you, you know, keep going up to the ranks of becoming a CFO, you are on the generalist path. So whenever you think about your career options or um, individual specific profiles, think about these broad three paths and then take a call. Cool. A consulting versus industry, you know, and I would like to highlight that there will be largely two sets of, you know, companies out there, right? So one will be your classic big fours or, you know, CA firms or accounting firms and all of that. And then the other one will be your classic industry. It could be a manufacturing, trading or a services kind of an organization. Now, which one do you choose, right? Which one is for you? How do I know if I have to go into an audit firm or if I have to go into industry? So how do I know that? So there are some indicators for that. Uh, if you are planning to go for consulting firms, then, then some, of the, some of the indicators are, do you want to be a subject matter expert? You know, to some extent, consulting firms are very close to subject matter. You know, um, audit, audit accounts and tax may be probably um, be 20% important in the industry, but it might be actually 80% important if you're working in a consulting firm or an audit firm. Yeah. If you like advising clients, you know, if you like that, if you get that, get that high when a client comes up with a 
you know problem in accounting standards or a tax problem and then you go you know dig into the books and then finally come up with a solution uh, to advise the client if that is your approach right if you want to move from one client to the other yeah i get very bored of by working in only one sector i now want to work in uh, you know a consulting firm so that i can cater to multiple uh, you know sectoral problems like today i'm working with a software company they have a tax problem then tomorrow i'm working with a you know uh, oil and gas company and they have a different kind of a tax problem yeah so if advising multiple clients is something that gives you a high then consulting space is for you again expert positioning like i mentioned if you want to be that expert someday now you you see you know some of the partners in big fours okay they have placed themselves uh, placed themselves as you know that experts in the country right any um, any regulatory matter that uh, that needs to be decided by the government okay these set of experts are always given a chance to make their opinion you know before that that becomes a law or that becomes a norm or a notification or a circular is passed right so expert positioning is what you will focus on if you want to work on the consulting space it need not always be audit accounts and tax it could be some some other subject matter as well like it, it could be a specialization in ipos you know okay i'm a ipo specialist i help companies you know take from ipo uh, you know go from pre ipo stage to the ipo stage that could be one example you know depending on again what you want to um, you know position yourself on the industry indicators are that you have a little bit of commercial bent of mind like not everything is going to circle around accounts audit and tax in the industry side yeah it could be a little bit commercial as well it could be uh, you know moving away from your subject matter expertise like i'll give you an example so when i joined uh, bharat petroleum which was my first job i was placed in a department called industrial fuels now what did i do in industrial fuels my first role was to take care of the pricing of industrial fuels apart from the regular petrol diesel that you see there are about 70 odd products that the company sells which are of industrial use okay now our job was to take care of the pricing of this uh, these 70 products every fortnight there used to be international pricing reports that we used to uh, download from the agencies and then we revise our prices and then upload it in the system okay uh, in some cases if there are bulk deals going on so we work on a bulk pricing for them what discount needs to be given what volume is going to be uh, you know uh, what volume is going to be taken by the client all of those things we used to decide and this has this had nothing to do with really audit accounts and tax per se yeah but the industry expects you to be flexible you know to be to have that commercial bent of mind okay and some of my friends joined in internal audit then after a couple of years they were posted into you know some other uh, business unit somebody was posted in aviation somebody was posted in gas a uh, gas sbu right or um, some some of my friends started uh in in tax uh, profiles and then they move to some other business finance kind of a profile and that is always possible on the industry side yeah um uh, again like i mentioned as you grow higher up the ladder the industry side your finance role is going to be a blend of business management and finance yeah it will not always be finance 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 or accounting accounting only it's not going to be a binary decision huh it's not going to be that theoretical that now when uh, when we are solving a capital budgeting problem let's say you know we compute npv right net present value okay if npv is positive go ahead with the project if npv is negative then you know don't go ahead with the project as simple as that right so um, it's not going to be that straight forward because in so sorry life, to interrupt ye meeting end ho jayega ek baar fir se join kar lijiyega ki meeting mein five meeting sure. zoom mein end ho jata hai sab jane ek baar join kar lijiye fir se ha meeting end ho jayega sure sure so in real life it's not going to be that binary uh, it 